Hello, it's Mikko. I post videos of me playing the bass daily. Every now and then people ask me what gear do I play. I'll walk you through it. Firstly, I talk about the bass, then the pedals in my home setup, what happens after the pedals, and a little bit about my live rig. Let's get started. Here it is, here's my main bass, pretty much the only bass that I ever play, and I'm sure you have seen it if you have watched my videos. Uh, it's a, obviously a J-style bass. I love the design. It's a, it's a custom. It's built by Sami Koivisto, so the brand is Koivisto Guitars. Built to my spec. There's a couple of things that I really wanted and couldn't get elsewhere. Um, Sami had his shop in Tampere, Finland, so here, in 2019 when I got the base. But since then he has relocated to Glasgow, Scotland. Luckily, I haven't needed any maintenance work now that I just cannot walk into his shop and get something fixed. Uh, this is really a rock solid instrument. Very, very high quality. Uh, the neck is maple. Uh, it's a very thin neck. I like thin necks so I can reach the notes much better. I have tiny hands. And it's long scale because I, although I hated that it's hard to reach these notes, but I really love the string tension that the long scale gives me. So that's why I want it really thin. And thin necks usually have one problem and it's that they can be very, very unstable. This one is not. There's two carbon fiber reinforcement rods inside the neck and it's very stable. I don't adjust the truss rod ever. It doesn't need it. No matter if the weather changes or if the seasons change, it's fine all the time. And that's that was one goal that I had when I ordered this base, that it has to be very reliable, very stable. So I can focus on playing and not adjusting the freaking truss rod all the time. What else? Uh, the fretboard is maple as well. There's no inlays. I, I like the looks this way. The frets are stainless steel, so they don't wear out at all. Uh, the body is alder. The top is arctic birch. I love the flame. It's really beautiful. I hope you get a glimpse. It's difficult to see in in videos, but in real life it's just stunning. I hope you get an idea. Uh, EMG pickups. I like EMGs, like actives. Uh, this is the bridge pickup volume. This is neck pickup volume. So they are reversed. Uh, I like it that way. A little bit of a custom wiring. Uh, I have four strings. I like four strings. It makes things simple and um, more ergonomic. I like the how four string neck feels uh, versus a five string or, or six string. And I tune down the D standard all the time. So I can hit those low notes when I need to. And in addition, I also have a hip shot so I can tune down to see even in the middle of a song if I really need to. So there's a few more notes, low notes available. I think that's it. This is my home studio pedal board. Um, it's quite messy, which is all right because it never leaves the house. Try to bear with me. Uh, on the left hand side, there's guitar stuff, which I'm going to skip. And on the right hand side, there's plenty of uh, pedals that I use both on bass and guitar. And finally, in the bass chain, there's this Sans and Bass Driver DI by Tech 21. My go to DI, my go to sound on the bass for 15 years or so. Uh, this is a, new, a little bit newer version of the pedal. I have an older one as well. Uh, first up in the chain is this Polytune 3 by TC Electronic, a very robust tuner, I love it. It's great, it's precise, tracks really well, it's accurate and you can set it in this uh, always on mode where it shows the pitch all the time and that's what I use. 
Uh, next up is this compressor, also by DC Electronic, which I don't use on the bass, so I skip it for now. Uh, then there's this octave pedal, Boss OC5. Uh, sometimes I like a little octave sound on the bass. Uh, usually I have it on a, this kind of a mild setting where most of the sound is the regular bass sound and then I have a little bit of octave up and a little bit of octave down. I'll show you first it's off and then I turn it on. <laughs> Pretty cool, especially with some distortion, which I really didn't have right now. The only drive you heard was coming from the from the sans amp and some of the devices that follow. But more about those later. Uh, next up in the chain, I have this one control mosquito trail blend or something. I can't read it this far away, but it's essentially an effects loop and in the loop I have three pedals. I have TC Electronic Mojo Mojo, Redwich Fast Guard, which is fast. By the way, this, this is an overdrive. And then uh, an EQ pedal by MXR. And the whole point is that I create this very gnarly mid rangey distortion, fast overdrive, whatever sound, which I blend in to taste. Depending on what kind of sound I'm going for, I have it uh, like low or medium or pretty high up. But the point is that I will always have my dry signal full full volume and then I just add some mid-range dirt. Let's hear how it sounds with this setting. It's quite subtle. I hope you can hear it. First off and then I turn it on. <laughs> Really subtle, I would say, but it really helps cut through in a in a mix with, say, drums and distorted guitars. And sometimes I have it way more up, so it's much more pronounced. But this is a subtle version of the effect. Next up, I have this uh, Source Audio Kingmaker Fuzz, which is not really that often running the fuzz setting. This is a fully digital pedal, and you can tweak it a lot with the, with the application. And I'm going for a very similar setup as with this uh, loop pedal and these pedals. But it's a little different flavor. Let's play without it and then turn it on. I'll, I'll keep the previous loop on because usually I just stack all these and tweak them to taste. This is without the Kingmaker and then I'll turn it on. I'll just leave it on if I play something more. But but yeah, pretty subtle, I would say. Uh, sometimes I tweak it to have more more drive there, but this is how I usually run it. Uh, and finally, we reach the Sans amp, which is, as I, I think I said it, it's my go-to pedal for bass bass tones for 15 years or so. Uh, I have plenty of drive in it already, so I like to keep it around noon. That's where I find it sounds the best. So a little more, or exactly at noon, or sometimes maybe even less. Uh, one thing to point out uh, at this point is that. Uh, I use both outputs. I use the normal output, which is the sound of the sans amp, and then I use the parallel output. And next I'm going to tell you what do I do with these sounds. I drew a chart of the signal paths that come out of the sans amp. The bottom one is the normal output. It goes through a DI into a mic pre and that's it. Standard stuff. I call it drive because it's pretty distorted. Then I have a clean low end from the parallel output. It's 
not really clean, it's fairly distorted, but as it's only the low end, it doesn't sound that distorted. So it goes through a DI mic pre, then into a slow compressor. And the point is to make it really bloom. Uh, then I have a, an EQ. Uh, it's essentially a low pass filter. That's what I'm going for. And I try to keep the signals in phase so I don't end up with uh, losing low end. I'm trying to add it and I, I think it works. I haven't seen any loss or I cannot hear any loss. So I hope it's working. Uh, finally, there's a fast compressor that I use to get rid of all transients. So this is only about a blossoming low end which I blend in to the drive. I crank the drive higher, but this is nevertheless in there and it makes a difference in my opinion. Um, finally, there's some compression and EQ, nothing crazy. Um, on the EQ, what I do is I boost a little bit of 100 Hertz and get rid of some 250 Hertz. And the point is, to move some energy from that muddy low mid area that is very crowded usually. Like everything in your mix will have stuff there. So I get rid of it from the base already at this stage. And I boost the 100 Hertz area, which is very relevant information on the bass guitar, especially in the style that I play it. I play sometimes fairly up high. So that's why I boost at 100 hertz and not say 60 or 40 hertz, which is really the low end. I think this is enough for this. Uh, I'll talk about my live rig a little bit now. Here's a picture of my live pedal board from summer 2022. As you can see, I love to keep things simple. I only have a tuner, then a drive. It's the same drive I use at home. Uh, lately, I've been also having a clean boost at this stage. So two different flavors of getting more out of the bass when needed. Then there's this EQ pedal that I use exactly the same way as in the home setup. So I boost at 100 Hertz and I cut at 250 Hertz. And no matter where we play, no matter how loud or quiet, no matter outdoors, indoors, whatever, it always works better that way. And finally, there's the sound amp, which is the core of my tone. That's it. Feel free to ask questions, post comments. I love to discuss this stuff. Like, subscribe, follow, and I'll see you in the next video.